My background was as a test development researcher in the maths team at the Standards and Testing Agency of the DfE. So I worked there for two years and developed the 2016 test framework. I used the frameworks that I produced when I was in the STA. So the tests are written to the content domain for each year group and previous years. The marks are balanced in the same way they would be balanced in the national tests and there's also a cognitive domain that forms part of the tests and that's how much reasoning, how straightforward the questions are versus how difficult, how much of a twist can we add to a question. I've kept the balance of that similar to that in the national tests. They're trialled nationally and the data that comes from that is analysed. Um, children with English as an additional language often struggle with some of the reasoning questions because they're wordy. So where there's been some bias against those children, we've gone back and reworded the questions to make sure that they don't present any additional difficulty. The tests have been written with the content domain from the new national curriculum, so they're entirely designed to support the new national curriculum. It's an important feature because we all have the old tests in our schools, unfortunately they're not measuring the new curriculum, so though they might show us progress, they're not showing progress against the new national curriculum. These were written with that curriculum in mind and they will enable you to monitor children's progress against the new curriculum. Year groups one to six are covered biannually, so an A test and a B test that follow the books. Those tests are modelled on the test framework for years two and six and scaled down with number of marks for years one, three, four and five. First test is an arithmetic test. It's a procedural test. Essentially it's testing a range of operations that the children can do. Papers two and three, or paper two for key stage one, will be testing the children's ability to solve problems and to reason. Sometimes we might want them to look at pure arithmetic, but in a specific format. So that's written in, in the questions in papers two and three. Each test comes with test guidance, details how many marks in the test, how long the test is, Key stage one have some oral questions, the test guidance has the oral questions and instructions on how to deliver those. The tests have a rough pass mark at the moment, but what we can do afterwards when you've taken your test and normally you'd enter all those results into a spreadsheet, maths no problem providing that as an online resource. You can enter your details, it will not only give you your gap analysis for the children so you'll know which chapters or if you're not a maths no problem school which programmes of study the children are lacking and on top of that you'll know the position of your school roughly in the national cohort of children who are taking the tests. One question I've been asked along the way by schools who aren't using Maths No Problem is whether or not these tests will be relevant for them. And the obvious one is the end of year tests, the B tests are entirely relevant because they test the curriculum up until that point. So if you're in year four, it will test the curriculum up until year four. Inequalities are taught in year two, but there'll be questions on inequalities in a year four test. The A tests focus on number first, because that's what the books focus on. So if you're a non-maths no problem school, you may say, what if I haven't covered that bit of the curriculum yet? The number's the basis of the curriculum. So anything in addition to the number that's in those questions is from previous year groups.